Ah, uh, I am honestly disgusted at what I had just read. The final ending of Bleach, chapter 685 and 686. That was the worst possible way to end the series. I was a huge fan of Bleach since the Arankar arc and the Soul Society arc when they all save Rukia and then when they're all trying to fight Aizen and the Espadas. They were the golden times of Bleach. But now I had to watch this once awesome manga fall downhill once the final saga started. Which was a damn shame because the last arc was starting off really good. Like we had um, Juha, Bak and the Quincy's, you know. Their first invasion, the Soul Society, was amazing. Like, let's, I'm going to be ranting mostly towards the ending because that was the time this show went to shit. Um, but let's start with the um, good positives first because I don't want to be too pessimistic. I mean, I know this video is about the ending being awful, but it's actually about the entire arc being awful. The entire final arc, I should be precise with. But let's start with the fact that they were really good in the beginning when they first introduced the Queen Sis. So we had Ichigo and the gang entering Huekomundu after they were react they were responding to like um the Quincy invasion there. We had the three um you know Harry Bell's fraction coming back, activating the huge monster to fight um the Quincy. All of that was really good because they were able to Kubo, I should say, the writer, the the, the manga creator, he was able to make it so that it was it felt like a real war. We had like real stakes. So Kira was immediately taken out of the war fight. Byakuya fought on um, Asnot and was immediately, well not immediately, but was taken out as well. We, any Byakuya fan was probably having a heart attack at that scene when, when he, Senbon Zakura was used against him. Like all of that was amazing. And then we had like Ichigo trying to get into the Soul Society, he gets locked out. Like, I mean, the way Kubo did the earlier parts of this chapter were really good. It's like he knew what he was doing. He knew how to set up the tension, the suspense, the horror. We really felt that. I mean, my favorite arc was the Arankar arc. I mean, I know most Bleach fans love the Soul Society arc, but I personally preferred the Arankar saga as the best one. And the Soul Society saga is my second favorite. But this, this Thousand Year Blood War arc, which is the final saga, the final arc, I should say, that was, it was going to be my favorite arc. Like, it was actually going to beat their, beat their Arankar arc if, they, if Kubo had managed to keep the writing as amazing as he did during the first few chapters of the arc. But unfortunately, as the arc progressed, it just lost steam. And towards the end, I can honestly say it was horrible, for real. Let's also talk about the ending later on, because that was complete and utter garbage. Like, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. It was garbage. Like, I'm not sugarcoating anything in this review. I'm just venting out my frustrations here. I know, I know I am about two years late, because I've always wanted to make this video, but I've always been too occupied. I've done other projects instead. So let me, I know it's probably two years late, so I might not get too much views for this, but I just want to let it out as an honest Bleach fan. Let's start with the action first, because <coughs> we had Ken Pachi getting his ass beat by Juha Bak. Well, actually, that was Royd um, pretending to be him. Then we had um, Yamamoto stepping in, like, even Hitsugaya was saying that was the first time he had seen Yamamoto really pissed off. And then we really could feel that Yamamoto's is not a person to be messed with. I mean, even before in the final arcs, during the fight with Aizen, we know that Aizen built Wonderwise to con contain Yamamoto's flames. All that was like, all of that already showed how powerful Yama was, but he was taken out in a cheap way because Aizen, you know, he basically played unfairly. He used Wonderwise to fight Yama, and that took him out of the fight. So now we could really see Yama's true de destructive capabilities when he tried to fight Juha Bak in the... Quincy arc, so basically that was one of the best moments of Bleach. We had in Ravili's Banka, you know, Sankai no Tachi, East, North, South, and West, all that stuff was really good. And it turned out that Juabak was actually down meeting Aizen. I mean, I literally screamed up and I was I was like, hell yeah, when I saw that, because the way the, the way the arc was set up was so good, I actually got goosebumps. And I was like, man, Kubo really stepped it up this time, he did really well with this. And then, after the first invasion, it all went downhill. Okay, we had Ichigo, we had a bunch of chapters learnt, lent on Ichigo learning his new Bankai. We had the plot twist that Juha Bak is actually the Quincy powers, you know, the fake Zangetsu, and then the hollow Ichigo was the real Zangetsu, so that foreshadowing back in the Arankar arc was now holds much more weight after. And then we get, okay, we get Ichigo's two blades, that was pretty cool. 
get to see his feats, he's like able to one-shot a bunch of Stern Raider, he's implied to be stronger than he was during the Dongai Saga, you know what I mean? And then, unfortunately, during, the, during around chapter 678, we get the most anticlimactic fight we have ever seen, and that was when Juhabak goes into the future and snaps it in one page. Like, let that sink in, one page. So we were hyped up for all those years, and we didn't even get to see his true Bankai capabilities. I mean, like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm just like, nah, sorry, Kubo, you don't get to pull that crap on the viewers after hyping it up for so long. Which, let's talk about the Zero Squad as well, because speaking of hype, the Zero Squad were, were very underutilized, especially, I mean, we had Oetsu Nimaya, who actually helped reforge Ichigo Zanpak Toe, and then, um, he was probably, okay, in my opinion, he was probably the second strongest royal guard, probably just second to Ichibei, who fought Juhabak as well, which was a good fight, but... The rest of them, I think I made a video on this already, like, the rest of the Zero Squad were off-screened just right after, um, just right after Juhabak res resurrects the dead Stern Raider. And then we get the most, okay, we get Juhabak versus, um, Ichibe, and then we get the most anticlimactic ending, which all the Zero Squad members were dead, so we don't, we don't even, okay, we don't even know if they're still alive. We didn't get any proper conclusion in the end, which, I know there were some complications in that they rushed the ending because... First of all, Kubo's mental health issues, and also Shonen Jump, I think, I need to get, I'm not sure if I'm correct, but Shonen Jump forced him to finish it as well, because the ratings were extremely low. That, along with that, will definitely made the ending far worse than Chida. I know that Kubo intended to have more, but still, that was still an awful ending, regardless of what happened. Alright, and, so speaking of that, so we got the Zero Squad hyped up, they were off-screened, just like how Yami was off-screened during their own car arc. Then we got um the new Bankai, which is shattered in one page. Then we get um we get okay the two full bringers are back. They are back to you know reforge Ichigo's sword. Tsukishima like goes back and inserts himself into the past and makes it so that Ichigo's sword is never broken. Then Orihime can actually reject it. So like you know how Aizen said that she can reject stuff that and make it never happen. So that's what he did. So we get like a half-assed final fight, which. Which, which I, Aizen was the MVP in this fight because he actually did most of the work. Ichigo only arrived at like the last second. Most of it was through Kyoka's Suigetsu. So we, so we got Aizen actually beating, um, well not beating actually, he was tricking him the whole time that Ichigo got a shot in. Then Aizen, I don't know, he was, which by the way, that was so out of character for Aizen because when has he ever been that careless? I mean, I was, that was already another red flag that I noticed, like, when when has he ever turned his back on the enemy to make sure he's he's dead? I mean, he I know he revived himself, but still I don't think he would be that much careless. So that was already a um red flag that I had noticed. Then um now since Juha Bug, I don't even know how he was defeated because he's honestly so overpowered. I think Kubo wrote himself into a corner just then, and the worst part is that the actual ass pool was not even as awesome. Like I mean. At least with the Ichigo vs. Aizen fight, we get to see that the final Getsu got Tenchu. That was really epic, although it was it was never really mentioned at all, but at least the scene was epic, so it kind of made up for that anyway. But basically, there was pretty much no epic moments in the final fight. Okay, we had Ichido shooting his arrow to deactivate the Almighty's powers, which doesn't even make sense because how how did he not see it coming? If he can see the future, right, how did he not see Ichido's arrow even coming at him? Like, he should have seen that immediately, so, um, we get Ichigo's Bankai broken a, s a third time, I think, it broke three times, first during the actual final fight, then second, the illusion, and then third, it broke in then, but then by some bullcrap plot convenience, the old Shikai revealed itself, which doesn't even make sense, I mean, I don't, I actually had to research about it, and other actual manga readers were also confused, so I was glad that I hadn't missed anything, I... I was like, huh? I had to reread a few pages. Like, I had to read if I missed anything, and then turns out I didn't. So, for whatever reason, the, it, his new Bankai's power is to revert to the old Shikai, and then there's that. He just kills Juabak, and they just, well, go on their merry way. So, we get a whole, I think it was a 10 year or 9 year time skip. I don't really recall. About a 10 year time skip. So, after that, that literally just that. Them slash Ichigo with his Shikai slashing Juabog, and then we get a 10 year time skip. Um, we don't even get to see how did they even manage to imprison Aizen back into the Mukin, which doesn't make sense because 
I mean, unless it's revealed in a data book, which I don't, I haven't really read the data book, so I can't really comment on that. But still, the fact that you have to read an external source just shows how bad the writing is. Anyway, so we get a whole year time skip. Um, Okitake, Okitake is actually was revealed to have died after take, sacrificing himself to replace the Soul King, which was very anticlimactic. We've we've been waiting to see Okitake's full potential, which. By the way, they did well with Josh. Um, they did well with Shunsoi's character Kyoku. They actually showed him to be a high tier character, but Ukitake pretty much got no justice in the entire arc. I mean, he did fight, but that was off screen, and then, and then um, we never got to see his, to see his bankai anyway, and we never got to see Aizen's bankai. So chalked it up to another loss as well. And now let's. I won't even get into the ending because, dear lord, that was terrible. We literally got no answers. Let's see, Urahara, we, we he was one of the best characters in Bleach, and he didn't even get to we didn't even get to see him in the final saga, like the final um chapter, I should say. Chad's backstory was that he would not fight, but he would fight to protect his friends. And now all of a sudden, his character did a three uh, did a one eighty, and now he's fighting for entertainment. So it's it, you know that's it. It's like Kubo didn't know what to do with Chad's character, like. He has, a, he has actually a talent of writing characters, but doesn't know how to actually utilize them to their full potential, which I believe I mentioned this in my other video before, in the Zero Squad video, that Kubo has a tendency to create awesome new characters, but, like, let's use the Vizards, for example, because, oh, man, were the Vizards useless in this final saga? Like, Shinji Hirako didn't even holify at all in most of his fights. I mean, like... God damn it, you, you created these characters and you let these guys do that? Like, I mean, I mean, like, um, all these potential was wasted. Chad didn't get to do much either. Orihime, at least, at least Orihime did something, but Chad pretty much had no standouts in this, in this arc. I mean, like, at least, at least Orihime tried to play a final fight. She tried to revive Ichigo's sword. I can still count that as doing something, at least. Chad had basically no justice. Ukitake had no justice either. Okay, um, let's see what else to talk about. So we got the Visors being shat on. And let's also talk about the villains, which, um, the villains were very uninteresting. Like, the Espadas, we had Okiara, we had Grimjo, we had Noitara, had all these interesting villains. We had Aizen, well, even Juha Bak is not as good as Aizen, like, it's like a shitty Aizen ripoff. I mean, like, I mean, yeah, sure, Juha Bak did kill more people than Aizen did, but, I don't know, Aizen just still felt more menacing and actually more of a threat compared to Juha. Well, Jua did feel like a threat in the first few chapters, but then he just got too tiresome. It's like, basically, Aizen was a hexed character, but he was on steroids. Like, he could transform the future, and at the same time, he could beat a true Bankai Ichigo, which was basically stated to be stronger than Dangai Ichigo. So, just imagine how overpowered that was. So, basically, whatever def how, the way he was defeated was basically bullcrap. And yeah, we got we got the odd pairings. We had Ichigo and Orihime paired together, which is weird, which is weird as hell. And we had um, we had um, what's his name? I I couldn't even remember Kazui Kurosaki. I don't even remember his name. That's how forgettable the ending was. Basically, it destroys Juvabak's fine remaining Reiatsu, which we don't even know how that happened. But I'll just chalk that up. I'll just accept that because you know, by that point, I'm just like, eh, whatever. Kubo's pretty much a big troll at this point. So, yeah, he managed to. Uh, make the last rea remaining traces of Jua Box Rea to disappear. And then that's it. We don't get to see Nell, we don't get to see Grimjo, Urahara, even Yoroichi, we didn't get to see them in the final arc. So they left out so much unresolved plot points. Even even the whole Gyoku, we don't even know. Like I mean, we, it might be still inside Aizen, but it was never confirmed whether it really rejected Aizen, or Aizen willingly lost his own powers, so that's still a big unknown, even at the end of Bleach. Hollybell, we don't know what happened to her either, she was chained up by Juabak, and there's that, she's just left out, just like typical, typical of Kubo to leave out plot points, they bring it up and never resolve it. And that's basically everything that I, that I have to say, so yeah, Bleach started off as really great, had had um great um potential as well, but it's just like the stuff the stuff following the Aizen arc, like after Ichigo vs. Aizen, it's like the manga went downhill after that. I mean it did go uphill like during the first invasion when they first attacked the Soul Society in the Queen Seas, that was good. Like had some 
interesting characters like Hashwal, Basby, and Juabak, I think were the most interesting villains. The rest of them were just like let's talk about um before we do that, let's talk about the um plot convenience because oh man, it's the Ken Pachi versus Grammy was um probably the worst fight because okay, Gram Grammy has the power of imagination. How can anyone defeat him? Like just imagine Ken Pachi's dead or something, but he instead basically defeated himself. Like he acted stupid and defeated himself. He just this Ken Pachi is basically a monster when it comes to raw strength, so Grammy should have resorted to using tactical strategies, but instead attacked him with brute strength, like threw a meteor at him and you know, used a bunch of machine guns or whatever. Like it was a, he had an interesting ability, but Kubo just didn't know how to write a hexed villain. That's pretty obvious because there were many, many ways he could have won that fight against Ken Pachi. Hell, even Ken Pachi said what the viewers were thinking that he was a moron for not using his powers correctly in the first place. And but I will say that there were a few positives, which I liked the um Jug um Jugram Hashfalt versus Basby. That was a pretty interesting fight. Ichibe versus Juabak was the, was amazing. We had um Ichimonji, we had the you know, all the weird spells, we had all the um all those um you know creative stuff like Ichibe combining his um Shikai with his spells, all that was really good. Juabak struggling, like that was probably the best fight in the um of the Zero Squad. I mean, not the best fight in the series. That goes to Ichigo versus Aizen or Ichigo versus Byakuya. Either one of those two gets the best fight. But it was one of the standouts in that otherwise dull arc. Like as I said earlier, I wish that they had done like Infinity War, where all the Zero Squad members team up against Juhabak, and then they will all basically showcase their abilities. Now that would have made I'm not saying okay, I believe I said this last time. I am not saying that Juha Buck should have lost to the Zero Squad because that is Ichigo's job. He's the main character. That's his job to kill the main villain, but they could have at least made the Zero Squad go out in a you know preferable way than getting off screen like losers. Which they were hyped up to be um stronger than the 13 court guard squads, but I mean, Oetsu, Nimaya, and Ichibe proved to be very powerful, but the rest of them were pretty much had no good feats. I mean, uh, just a bunch of wasted potential. I really um, am frustrated with this as a Bleach fan. Um, so, in conclusion, Kubo could have done much better. I know that there were some complications because Kubo um, was sick, I think he had mental problems, mental health problems, and they were he was also forced to end it. So all these um, details we are never going to get. Which I also believe that Kubo said one time that it would be even longer than the Arankar arc, but it actually turned out thirty chapters shorter than the Arankar arc. So there's that. That's my um, Bleach review, the final arc review actually, because it was actually. Um, it was less than satisfactory. It started off really good, let me say that, but it just went downhill later on, which is a damn shame. Okay, that's it. <sighs> Disgusting.